Papadian runs a study, it's a 10-year study, with the world's most virulent, terrifying sexually trained... I mean, this thing jumps, excuse me, off of penises into vaginas miles away. How many of them do you think, after 10 years, with the world's most terrifying, virulent, sexually transmitted disease came up positive? Not nobody. Nobody. Nobody who was negative came up positive. Zero. One thing I always say is that you should never judge a book by its cover. But you know, sometimes guys, yeah, you kind of can. This is Liam Sheaf, and according to the documentary, he's an investigative journalist. But a quick Google search reveals that Liam prefers the title of conspiracy realist. The reason why Liam gives himself this title, and not the title of conspiracy theorist, is that he believes the term conspiracy theorist is a conspiracy theory, made by the government to cast a shadow on people like him. <sighs> I don't think I could adequately explain how batshit crazy Liam is, therefore I recommend that you check out his website and YouTube channel to see it for yourself. There you will find the ramblings of a madman. Honestly guys, this guy gets a 9 out of 10 tinfoil hats on my crazy conspiracyometer. Liam admits to being a truther, a creationist, and an AIDS denialist. He also believes that the Boston Marathon bombings were a false flag operation, and that Facebook is run by the FBI, yet owns his own Facebook page which he frequently posts on, and that JFK was assassinated for standing up to the CIA. He's also an anti-vaxxer and has taken it upon himself to produce a comic book about the dangers of vaccinations. The comic book is called The Geneticals, and stars the world's first team of vaccine-damaged superheroes, who band together to fight bad science and search for the cure of their toxic state, whatever that means. You would think after writing his own superhero comic book, he'd be a fan of the whole genre, but nope. One of the more interesting claims on Liam's website is that Josh Whedon's The Avengers is some kind of mind control. As for his YouTube videos, you have to see them to believe them. My favourite is called Ask a Scientist because it shows how little he knows about science. Honestly, it's really comical and at the same time, really sad. Have you ever been hurt by a vaccine? Of course you haven't. You can't be. At least, you can't sue us for it. We're scientists. The government has indemnified all scientists from being sued, even if we kill you with a vaccine. Now, a few of you out there might be saying this is nothing more than a character assassination and nothing more than ad hominems thrown at this guy, and you'd be correct so far for this video. But to be honest with you, I think it's important to show the level of some people in this documentary. I mean, there's scraping the bottom of the barrel, and then there's this guy. It's totally baffling to me why Brent would want someone in his documentary who subscribes to every conspiracy theory going, especially when he's trying to produce a movie that's an objective examination of the idea that HIV causes AIDS. Because one thing we can all agree on is how objective conspiracy theorists are. The movie also stars Nancy Padian, a medical researcher at the University of California, San Francisco, and lead author of the paper, Heterosexual Transmission of the Human Immunodeficiency Virus in Northern California, results from a 10-year study, which has been discussed in the film. Now to make sure no one can say shenanigans, shenanigans, here's the entire clip without any edits. The vast majority of the uh, world's population is not at any measurable risk of HIV infection. No measurable risk. Growing up in the age of AIDS, I was taught there were three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and contracting HIV from unprotected sex. If you don't use a condom, there's a lot of chances that you can actually get the killer disease that is AIDS. I did a study of the heterosexual transmission of HIV in California and we recruited individuals who were infected with HIV, then we recruited their sexual partners and we looked at whether transmission in fact had occurred. Padian runs a study, it's a 10 year study, with the world's most virulent, terrifying sexually trained, I mean this thing jumps, excuse me, off of penises into vaginas miles away. How many of them do you think after 10 years, with the world's most terrifying, virulent, sexually transmitted disease came up positive. Not nobody. Nobody. Nobody who was negative came up positive. Zero. I think HIV is more difficult to transmit than other sexually, than a lot of, probably most other sexually transmitted diseases. I mean, I think that's pretty widely known. Nancy begins to talk about her research, and she says over 10 years that she recruited partners where one of them would be HIV positive. She then looked to see if HIV had been transmitted. As she's saying this, we're shown a picture of the front page of her research. We then cut to Liam, who tells us that no one in this 10-year study contracted HIV from their partners. He says nobody, nobody, nobody who was negative came up positive. Zero. 
Now you might be wondering to yourself, why is Liam the one here discussing the findings of the paper and not the scientist who conducted the study? This is because Brent, the director and star of the movie House of Numbers, wants to fool the viewer into thinking no one in the study contracted HIV from their partners. And it's more than likely Liam was probably the only one interviewed who was stupid enough to lie about this research. He's not misinterpreting the data, he is flat out lying, and therefore so is Brent. Nancy's study showed that HIV can be transmitted through heterosexual sex, and notes that male to female transmission is approximately 8 times more efficient than female to male transmission. Even on the low resolution of the copy of the film that I found, which I totally got legally by the way, I could see the front page of Nancy's research where it says, overall, 68, 19% of the 360 female partners of HIV infected men, and 2, 2.4% of the 82 male partners of HIV infected women were infected. It's, it's right there, it's on the front page, it's, it's right there, it's shown in the movie House of Numbers, and yet this guy, Liam, is telling us that actually no one was infected. What? I find it hard to understand why Brent thought it would be acceptable to have a man lying about a piece of research on the transmission of HIV, a deadly virus, in his documentary. I also don't understand why he missed the opportunity to ask many of the many scientists in this documentary whether they thought HIV could be transmitted through sex. I mean, for God's sake, the documentary featured the woman who actually wrote the paper. Do you think she believes that no one in the study contracted HIV from their partners? The level of deception is truly unbelievable. And the fact that you have the balls to put the abstract of the paper in your documentary whilst lying about the number of people who were infected is just... It's... Are, are you trolling us, Brent? Are you trolling us? Now I know some of you out there might be thinking maybe Brent edited the movie to make it seem like Liam was saying something that he wasn't saying. I mean, it's not like he's done that before. Well, a quick look on Liam's YouTube channel shows that he does indeed believe that HIV can't be transmitted through sex. There was a study done by a, a, a famous researcher called Nancy Pay. Do we have a picture of Nancy Padian? There she is. She took 175 couples, that's 175 times whatever, and she took uh, the 175 negative people in those couples and 175 positive people, and she let them do their thing. Intermingle. Here's the church, here's the steeple. Don't open the doors. They were doing everything. I mean everything. To each other. To each other for uh, six years. And at the end of those six years of the positives and the negatives, the number of people who turned positive having been negative was exactly zero. Zero. That's a zero. Now, they didn't like this. They published it, but they didn't like it. So they came and said, well, maybe, maybe it's one in a thousand uh, exposures. But that wasn't the real number. The real number was zero, and that's in the study. And this is repeated throughout the medical literature over and over again. <sighs> Anywho, let's talk about the paper itself and what it actually shows and what it was actually trying to accomplish. First, the paper, yeah, it's an interesting little read, but like everything in this world, it's not perfect. For example, it relies on volunteers to take part in this study, which will not be a fair representation of the population. But the paper is aware of faults like this. Its goal was to examine and rate the risk factors of heterosexual transmission of HIV. Now I have to stress that some people did get infected in this study. 68 females and 2 males. But there is a part of the paper that I believe Liam is referring to, and that's a bit of a spin-off piece of research where no one got infected. In 1990, a sub-study began, where couples where one of the partners was HIV positive were given counselling sessions together. These sessions focused on safe sex practices, including condom use, abstinence, social, financial and legal issues associated with HIV infection. They were also given an 800 number that they could call any time to ring their counsellor. Because of this, they found that the people in this group drastically changed how they were going about things. They were more likely to be abstinent, or to constantly use condoms and were much less likely to practice anal sex. Because of this, no one in this little arm of the study contracted HIV from their partners. It showed that education, use of condoms, etc. really helped stop the transmission of HIV. Again, this is just one little arm of this paper. It really takes a special kind of person to look at this whole paper and say that it's the proof that HIV can't be transmitted through sex. No one who has ever understood this paper, or even read it, would ever agree with what Liam is saying. Oh wait, hang on a sec, wasn't he the guy who told us that HIV tests don't work? These tests claim to be HIV tests. I'm going to read from a section that's called, that says limitations of the tests. The specificity of the reveal rapid HIV antibody test for blood specimens in low risk populations has not been evaluated. They don't know, in their terms even, how well this test is going to work in people they don't want it to work in. Isn't it funny how they work when they think it backs up his argument? 
Again, I have to mention that this study is not perfect. For example, it only looked at 175 couples, of which the longest duration was six years. And really, it's not good proof that HIV can be transmitted through sex. I mean, how do we know the people infected were truly infected by their partners? But I guess until more research is done, we'll never know. Oh wait, what's that? HIV has been extensively researched, and more than one person has been researching it over the past 30 years? If you want a better example of similar kind of research, how about the paper, rates of HIV-1 transmission per blah 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 blah. This is much better at showing the transmission between partners, if that's what you're looking for. It enrolled 15,127 people between the ages of 15 and 59, and followed them for 40 months. And before you ask, yes, people in this study also became infected from their partners. And to make sure they were infected from their partners, their viruses were sequenced, and they were found to be the same. I feel like a broken record here, but if you doubt the existence of HIV and whether or not it can be transmitted through sex, please run a search for research. You will be overwhelmed by the evidence that HIV can be transmitted this way. How many of them do you think, after 10 years, with the world's most terrifying, virulent, sexually transmitted disease, came up positive? Not nobody. Nobody. Nobody who was negative came up positive. Zero. I think HIV is more difficult to transmit than other sexually than a lot of probably most other sexually transmitted diseases. I mean, I think that's pretty widely known. Nancy begins to talk about the difficulty of being infected by HIV through sexual contact. She correctly states that HIV is more difficult to transmit than most other sexual transmitted diseases. The problem I have here is with the deceitful editing, which makes it look like Nancy is backing up Liam's claims that HIV can't be transmitted through sexual contact. Nancy is correct. HIV is difficult to contract as shown in the paper, Rates of HIV-1 Transmission. But just because it's difficult to contract, doesn't mean that it's impossible. At the same time this is happening, the movie is showing a picture of a sign that reads, Prevent AIDS, use a condom for safe sex. By doing this, the documentary is really heavily implying that condoms are pointless, because hey, if you can't get HIV through heterosexual sex, then what's the point in using one? Now I realise when something's implied like this, it's often open to interpretation, but everyone I've shown this documentary to has said the same thing that the film is implying that condoms are pointless. Honestly, this is sickening, and this is the point where the film changes from just batshit crazy to an actual health hazard. I can't stress enough the dangers of having unprotected sex if your partner is HIV positive, even if you're positive yourself. HIV is very dangerous, and a very real virus, and is responsible for the death and suffering of millions of people. HIV can be transmitted through heterosexual intercourse, in both directions. And the best way of reducing the risk of transmission is to wear a condom. Reckless infection of a person with HIV is considered to be a crime here in the UK. If you're found guilty, you will spend time in jail and most likely have your name disgraced in the papers. In this short clip of the movie, Brent has shown us how deceitful he is willing to be. There is no doubt in my mind that Brent knows the results of this study, especially having interviewed the author and having the front page of the research in his bloody documentary. By featuring someone in the film who's lying about the findings of the study, Brent is lying himself to the people watching the documentary. By implying that condoms are useless, Brent has solidified his position in my mind of one of the most disgusting human beings who have ever lived.